गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग नाउ सिंस वी आर ऑलरेडी इट्स 11 7 ऑन माय वॉच सो आई विल जस्ट स्टार्ट विद द सेशन बट बिफोर दैट आई कुड बिफोर आई कुड स्टार्ट बिफोर आई कुड स्टार्ट आई वुड लाइक टू स्पीक समथिंग अबाउट अ शेफ टुडे our guest chef today is someone who inspires us on a daily basis someone whose passion to food is immense he is our very own principal chef hari suvarna hari sir is a pass out from ihm amdabad in the year 1993 in 1993 started his journey in at taj as hotel operational management training and worked in golden dragon restaurant as a dim sum chef as his specialty also represented it represented chinese kitchen at taj at all india chef olympiad and won silver medal along with cash prize and an expensive gift hamper in 1999 selected for opening a new independent restaurant at taj ncpa nariman point travel with celebrity chef chef hemant obroy to vietnam jakarta bali singapore and the list just goes on and on to study south asian cuisine in january 2000 Chef was a part of the opening team and second in charge for the new South Asian cuisine named Sidewalk at Nariman Point with dual roles as abuyor and chef. In 2003 December decided to change his profession to academics and joined Anjuman as a senior lecturer and then principal in the year 2009 i can go on and on and on without a full stop but to cut it short i now hand over the session to hari sir so students please keep a book and pen ready to write down my new details secrets and tips that would be shared by chef and also note that the art of making dim sums is when you learn these secrets from chef over to you sir but before that i would like to show you a short video of the history of dim sums uh, so we we'll just enjoy that video as i just play and then i will uh, we go and meet hari sir personally and you can see the small little things that sir is making with detailed intricacies thank you and it's you are here Today I'm going to talk about the stories behind one of my favorite food Chinese dumplings. It was invented during the Eastern Han Dynasty. It's about 1800 years ago by Zhang Zhongjing, who was one of the greatest practitioner of Chinese traditional medicine in history. Nowadays, in Chinese, we call dumplings jiaozi. However, at the very very beginning, it actually called jiao er, which means tender ears. Here I'm going to tell you the story behind it. After Zhang Zhongjing retired and returned to his hometown, he found that a lot of people had frostbitten ears due to the cold weather and lack of food during the winter. So he asked his students to use some lamb and other traditional medicine made a filling, wrapped in dough, boiled and give it to people. It said that their body and ears start to warm up after eating the dumplings for a while. 
In a lot of northern province in China, people serve dumplings as their major dish during the traditional New Year because the shape of the dumpling it looks like the golden nugget. Uh, it's called yuan bao in Chinese. People believe that serving dumplings during traditional New Year can bring the whole family prosperity in the coming year. And making dumplings is such a fun family activities. The dumplings I make are normally very chubby because I always try to feel as much filling as I can into one dumpling. And there's no correct way or wrong way to make a dumpling, so just have fun with it. But just make sure that when you're closing the edge on the top, um, you seal the edge so when you're cooking them, they won't burst. There's another tradition, which is hiding a clean coin into one of the dumplings. And that dumpling, it's called the lucky dumpling. However, in my family, we like to use peanuts, chocolate, or something sweet instead of the coin. Dumplings are normally served in three different ways. Boiled dumplings, steamed dumplings, and pan-fried dumplings. And also, they will give you a dipping sauce when they serve you the dumplings. Or if you go to some dumpling restaurant, you will find there's like a small tray on the table so you can make your own dipping sauce. The dipping sauce normally has soy sauce, vinegar, spicy oil, garlic, some people like to put sesame oil, some people like to pay, put uh, hot sauce, um, and it's really up to you. So it's really personal preference. The most traditional filling of the dumplings are pork and cabbage, pork and Chinese leek, pork and hot bad chives. I know, Chinese eat a lot of pork. And also there are so many other different fillings that you can find in dumpling restaurants, such as uh, beef and carrots, lamb and onion, pork and coriander, or you can go all vegetarian with it. My personal favorite is actually the traditional one, uh, which is the pork and cabbage. That's my favorite. And a pork and pickle cabbage. Some of you might confuse about what's the difference between a dumpling and the wonton. So next time, I'm going to do a comparison video about those two. So make sure you come back and watch my next video. Alright, so please comment down below to let me know what's your favorite type of dumpling. Well, hope you guys like this video. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Hope everyone eat well, drink well, and be happy. See you next time. Well, that short video you're gonna see now, I hand over the entire session to Harissa. Over to you, sir. Hey, hello. This is Harish, uh, Chef Harish, you can call me. Um, as uh, I think sir has told you about me, a little bit about me, is basically I would, what I would like to say is, uh, like you all, I was aspiring to become a chef, but in a very different line. My uh, line of love was basically into card manger and vegetable carving, fruit carving, because I, before I joined hotel management, I was already into carvings, into clay modeling and carvings in wood and etc. 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 Somewhere down the line, when I joined the uh, Taj Mahal Hotel, I was aspiring to go into the card major section, in the cold section, but I was definitely put into Golden Dragon Kitchen. In the Golden Dragon Kitchen, it is basically the first Chinese restaurant, you know, five star hotel in Mumbai, and uh, it's got a very big importance in Mumbai itself. Uh, in the Golden Dragon, as I was trying to learn uh, as an operations management training, I was trying to learn the nonsense of Chinese kitchen, and that is where I fell in love with something called the Dim Sum. It's a very small section, but it has a very big place in the hearts of people of Mumbai. Now, the Dim Sum section, as I said, uh, uh, takes care of a lot of uh, things in, in, in Taj. Currently, Dim Sums, uh, at those times when I joined Dim Sums, were available only in the Golden Dragon kitchen. But nowadays, if you see Dim Sums are almost everywhere, it was a specialty in those days. Uh, why I like dim sums? Uh, uh, these are small things. Basically, dim sums is, a, is, is basically into art, more than art. So you need to have those nimble fingers. You need to have, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the place to, to check out what art is basically. And that is where I started uh, working in the dim sum section. Uh, to be very frank, let me tell you guys, uh, this, uh, in this one and a half, two hours, it will be really very difficult to put everything that I've learned. Because me, 
myself, it took me around about six years to perfect the art of pencils. So there's a lot of small, 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 small things that has to be taken care of, which to be very frank, uh, it will be very difficult for me to put up in, uh, in, in just a two-hour session or a one and a half hour session. Uh, but basically, uh, what I would like to show you all is, is, is cutting short into a lot of things. Uh, there's a lot of uh, patience that you require in doing the things, but what I have done, I'll try and put it into that small section now that I've got time for. Uh, basically, what is Dimsum? So, okay, uh, for the Chinese people, it is uh, it, it's a small tidbit which when you eat it, it, it touches your heart. Okay, so Dimsum are small tidbits made with a covering or without a covering. Okay, uh, which where you can use a flat dough or you can use use a, a fermented dough for this. And uh, there is a lot of varieties in the Dimsum which once you learn the basics, then only you will be able to catch up to what exactly. Now, what are the basics? In the basics, if you see, dimsums are basically served as a snack item. Okay, it goes as a starter or a snack item and goes very well with green tea. So they usually have a Chinese tea and they have dimsums as a snack item. Okay, now there are various variations, uh, right, from chicken to pork to duck. Okay, and there are vegetables, various different vegetables. But one main thing I like to tell you is when it comes to dimsums, the Chinese people they would love to you know, savor the basic flavors. For example, if there is something made out of a chicken, the chicken will have hardly a small thing as a, a salt and a pepper, okay, not nothing more, because they would like to experience the, the taste. Okay, they like the flavor of a chicken. If it's a chicken, they would love to have the flavor of a chicken. If it's a lamb, the flavor of a lamb. And then there are something called as dips, or what they call as sauces. Okay, They have a lot into sauces. So, this is like a small tidbit that has been used to dip it to a particular sauce. Uh, like what you see in India, basically in India, the Chinese has taken a very big U-turn and the food that is made in China, India, what we call as a Chinese is exactly not a Chinese food. It is totally made as per the adjustment that has been made for the taste of the Indian people. So there's a lot of ginger that goes into it, a lot of garlic that goes into it, a lot of red chilies and coriander and all this thing goes into it and that is where it spoils the actual base of something called as a dim sum. Okay. In dim sums, if you see, uh, if there is a dim sum where only one item that might go in, okay, either a salt is a permanent item, a little bit of Ajinomoto, they try to avoid Ajinomoto in actual China uh, because uh, they it is very difficult to find uh, the natural Ajinomoto, okay, which is present in something called as a sea weed. Okay. Now, these are sea grasses, they are long grasses which is found under the sea. Okay, harvesting those will spoil the ecology, which is the reason the artificial ajinomoto that is coming to the market. As I, as I had been talking with the Chinese chefs when I was doing the work at Taj, okay, they said uh, harvesting those seaweed is, becomes a little bit of a problem because one truck full of seaweed can give you only half a kilo to 750 grams of ajinomoto. So you can imagine what might be the kind of harvesting that they will have to do a proper amount of ajinomoto. That's the reason the artificial ajinomoto that is added, monosodium glutamate in chemical form that is coming. Yeah, it is true. Eating a lot of ajinomoto does create a lot of problem to a human system. But if you see, if you if you go into a proper way, there's a lot of vegetables which is available which has a part of monosodium glutamate in their constitution of that. Like for example, uh, uh, the palak that we eat that has ajinomoto in it. And uh, the, the green pepper, that is a capsicum that we have, they have natural ajinomoto in it. So that is the reason you will find a lot of these greens that goes into the Chinese vegetable. They also constitute uh, or give a part of the flavor that is called. Ajinomoto is something that is put in Indian cuisine, in the Indian Chinese more than what they do in the Chinese. In the Chinese, they use a lot of the leafy vegetables, okay, like the spinach, okay, capsicum. When it gets boiled inside the, 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 the broth inside, that is where it leaves its chemical component, which is a natural monosodium glutamate that is present in there. That is the reason you feel, you get the feeling, you get the taste of ajinomoto. But in India, as it is uh, used in a very huge quantity, which is definitely a no-no. Okay, any Chinese authentic guy will not use ajinomoto the way the Indian people use it. Okay, because at this day also it is very dangerous. Any authentic Chinese food you will never find. Uh, you know, Ajinomoto is 
Number two is uh, the, 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 the actual food of China is really very really different than the actual than the food of Chinese food that we eat in India. If you go to China, you will definitely not be able to savor their food because you know they, they, they look into that flavor part. Okay, it is not in only the taste part, but it's also in the flavor part. Okay? So they, the food might not taste as pungent and as strong as what the Indian Chinese is. They have those delicate flavors, like if it has a leafy vegetable, they would like to savor the, the, the flavor of those leafy vegetables. If there is a meat, so if you see in a lot of Chinese videos, that is that nowadays social media is very strong, you will get to know a lot of things in social media. Okay, if you see it is a simple broth that is made in which they will put those thin slices of meat. When it gets cooked in that broth, you get a delicate flavor of the broth and the actual flavor of the meat. What we do over here in the Indian cooking, if you see, our meat will not taste like a meat, it will taste like an entire masala that goes inside it. So without that, you will feel, uh, we Indians feel that we are eating a boiled meat. Okay, so that is what basically the thing is. So in today's session, what I will be showing you is the basic, basic of uh, the Chinese dim sums. Um, to be very frank, uh, something that has been told to me or given to me from the Taj Hotel as a dim sum chef, to be very frank, there are a lot of other people who are much more better than me, but then I would like to thank one person. Uh, a lot of them must have worked in Taj, uh, Chef Ashok Garade. He is one person who is still working at Golden Dragon and he's retiring soon. He is the one who, who caught my hand and he said, okay, you will be able to do this job. Uh, now, frankly, uh, to be very frank, I tell you what, when you go to work in any hotel, none of the Chinese guys will teach you anything. Okay? They have that fear that if you if, you, if they teach you, you will take away the art from them. But art is something, this, this work as a chef is something that you, what you can do, the other chef cannot do. What the other chef can do, you cannot do. Okay? So you need to keep trust on what you are doing, what you have learned. Uh, a second thing that I've learned from the, the Chinese kitchen in Golden Dragon is basically any chef, any chef in any cuisine will not teach a youngster till the time the chef has that thing that the person whom he is going to teach will carry the legacy of that chef. Okay, if I teach you A, B, and C, and if I know that you become an expert in A, B, and C, and you carry it further into D, E, and F, that is where you carry the legacy of. Okay, the moment. The chef feels so that is where the chef stops. Okay, so this is where you have to gain the confidence of the chef. Tomorrow, when you go to work in the kitchens, the first thing is you have to gain the confidence of, of the chef under whom you are working. Only once you have, you have gained the confidence and then you show them that yes, I can carry your legacy forward. That is where the chef can actually teach you the tricks of the day. Now, why it took me six years? Because there's a lot of things that has to be that I have to learn right from cleaning the table, okay, right from cleaning the oven, cleaning the table, cleaning the baskets, okay, mopping the floor. I did everything because I never said no to anything because I wanted to learn the things. It was a challenge. It was a challenge uh, that uh, the Chinese chef did not teach you, okay. So to gain his confidence, I had to do all this work of mopping, cleaning, you know, swiping, cleaning the plates and everything and then, and I had, uh, and my eye was onto the corner where I used to see what exactly the chef is that is where I started catching up. Uh, day came when I should say uh, maybe I was very lucky. Um, there was some problem where the chef left and went away from the kitchen and he just left his job and went away and by the time they were waiting for another chef, the Dinsum section was getting suffered. That is where Chef Ashok Karate, who was assistant to this Chinese chef, he Chansam. Okay, He took me as his assistant and that is where I started working in the Dinsum section and then a time came where the executive chef said we do not need a Gimsum chef because Chef Harish has already taken over and he's doing the job very well. Okay. Now, after working in Golden Dragon, uh, uh, Chef Obroy uh, extended the Gimsum thing into uh, different sections or different regions of the Taj Mahal Hotel. It's the, the first lot that went from my kitchen as in Gimsum was a variation of Indian stuffing, a Chinese Gimsum with Indian stuffing that was put up in. The restaurant, which is uh, now the restaurant has changed as a masala bay. Uh, previously, it was called as a tanjo. Tanjo was the first restaurant where I had sent my, where we had tried our first set of Chinese dim sum, okay, it was a combination of China and India, stuffing of Indian, okay, Indian non mixed stuffing with a shell of shell that is a dim sum shell. Then it extended into the buffet of uh, Shamiana and then it just extended into outdoor parties. We, previously, outdoor parties were never given dim sum, but uh, a day has come now where outdoor parties for all the outdoors, for all marriage functions, functions 
for all the banquet functions. Dipsums are made available to everyone and uh, every uh, for all the sections over there. Okay. Uh, by the time all this thing has happened, uh, I have catered to the maximum that I have catered to is uh, uh, three varieties of veg and three varieties of non veg, each 1200 dozens. That is, a, that is a maximum that I have done along with a team of industrial trainees along with me and some folks with me. And that was a big challenge that I had undertaken for a huge wedding party. And the order that came to me was three variety of veg and three variety of non veg. So 1,200 dozen, one dozen is square, okay? One dozen is square into 1,200 into the three varieties of non veg, square into 1,200 into the three varieties of veg. Okay, so it was a big task. But yes, it took, uh, uh, we took care of it with my team. It took me almost three to four days to complete this entire mammoth task, which had to be sent to an outdoor function of 15,000 people. So that is where I proudly say I was able to do that uh, challenge, take up that challenge and get it done. Somewhere down the line uh, where uh, as uh, ethics are said, I had to change my life and I had to make a decision in my life. That is where I changed and I joined Adhamana Islam. And uh, for six years, I was teaching Indian cuisine for the second, uh, for, the, for the first six years, I was teaching Indian cuisine for the second years, okay, of Maharashtra State Board Diploma course that was running at that time. And then after 2009, this is the time that I became the principal. I'm sorry to say this, after becoming the principal, the work, the Indian work and all the other works took so much of my time that I never got a chance to come back to the district. Today also, it is, I'm having a really tough time with the, taking care of the admin work over there and uh, the, the, the demo that I'll be going to do today. So please excuse me if I'll be in a little bit of speed or in a hurry. Okay, because I need to complete this in a short duration. Okay, and I'll try my level best to make you understand what exactly. So we will start with the basic, basic things. Okay, there are certain basic ingredients which are always there in the Chinese kitchen. Those basic ingredients with a different permutation and combination you can do right from the starter, okay, to the soup, to the main course, to the dessert. But these certain things has to be there. Okay. So some of the, the major ingredients that I'll show you, then there are other vegetables which are there, meats which are there, which currently are not there, but that spice box which is required to do the mixing. Okay. Now for the dim sums, okay. Now before I start with the dim sums, I'll show you the spice box. Please. Now if you see, these are the basic ingredients which are required. Okay. Most of them they go chopped or they also go diced. Today we have done chopped because we will be using it in something called as dim sums. Okay. I'll start from here. This is uh, chopped celery, chopped regular onion, chopped garlic. Okay, spring onion is divided into three parts because in the spring onion there is something called as the bulb. Okay, the stem. Okay, and the leaf. All these three, believe me, they have a different taste with them. Okay, when the moment it is, it gets combined. Okay, now this is the bulb part of the spring onion. Do you have a spring onion? Yeah, show me a spring onion. Okay. Students, I request you that if you have any questions at the end of the session, you can make your notes or your points. And then at the end of the session, we'll have an interactive session with Sir, where you can ask your questions directly to Sir one by one. Okay. Till then, just hold your horses and just keep a book and pen ready. Like I am writing notes, like you can see here, I'm making no notes over here. You too can take advantage with regards to the same. Thank you. Yeah. Now, uh, I would like to show you this is the spring onion. Okay, now here we divide it into three parts. One is the pulp, this is the pulp part, this is the stem part, and this is the, the leaf part. Okay, all the three have got different uh, kind of flavor in it. Okay, so when we combine it or we use it in different ways, the, the flavor gets enhanced or the flavor gets changed. Now, this is where it is the pulp part has been chopped over here, the stem part has been chopped over here, and the greens part has been chopped over here. Okay, now that is where the, the combination happens. Then we have the red chili paste. Uh, to be very frank, in India, there is one chili only which gets exported to China, which is not available in India nowadays. Uh, that is called as a resham patti. Resham patti in chili is a, it's a flat kind of a dried red chili, which is called a smooth satin coating on it. Okay, it looks like, uh, you know, resham is uh, silk. It looks like flat and shiny. It is not available in India, to be very frank, because it is, it is, it, get, it grows in a place called as uh, 
Rajasthan, and everything gets exported because China uses it all. So a lot of part of it goes over there. We can still make use of another substitute that is called as a Kashmiri chili. Now, why Kashmiri chili is because the color red is very dominant and strong in Kashmiri red chili, but then it is not as spicy as any other chili. So what we would like to do is we would like to use this color in food instead of putting artificial color. This is where the chili comes into play. Okay, now a chili. Now this chili. To be very frank, there is a process that goes into it. You soak it in hot water or warm water for at least an hour. After that, you remove it and put it into a colander to let all the water drain. Now this is done. This is done after you remove the, the stem and you remove the seed. You de-seed it, and then that is after the cleaning is done. Then you soak it for at least an hour. After it is soaked, you strain it onto a strainer and remove the excess water out, and then you make a paste with absolutely no water in it. Okay. Now this can be a paste or this can be a little bit coarse. Once it is done, we add a little bit of ajinomoto to it. We add a little bit of salt to it. You add a little bit of garlic and ginger paste. Mix it thoroughly, and then you use oil. The oil has to be a smoking. You know, it has to be hot and smoking. And that is when you sear this thing and you keep on mixing it. Now in this process, the paste gets cooked. It's eighty percent cooked. And the oil that flows onto the top later on, when you keep, leave it for setting, and when it comes to room temperature, the oil gets all the color. That red color is used for a lot of things. The red chili paste is used for a lot of things where it enhances and it changes the color. Okay, a hot garlic sauce. The color from the hot garlic sauce comes from this. What you get in the market, or you call it as a Szechuan sauce, there is nothing called as a Szechuan sauce. To be very frank, don't feel bad. Shezwan is a name of a place in China. Shezwan is a name of a place. There is nothing called as an American chop suey. Okay, this is something that has been invented in America. There is nothing called as an American chop suey that is available in some in in China. Okay, now these are all foreign words over there. Okay, so there is nothing called as a Manchurian. Manchuria is a name of a place. There is nothing called as a Manchurian. They are called as wheat balls or they are called as wedge balls. Red balls and soya sauce. That is the actual name. But then the name that you hear over here, because a lot of restaurants and a lot of people when they go to eat Chinese, there's only one thing that they will order. They will order for chicken Manchurian or red. There is nothing called as a Manchurian. Manchuria is the name of a place. Okay, it's like like they have small small districts. Okay, so Manchuria is the name of a place. Szechuan is the name of a place. Okay, there is nothing called as a Szechuan sauce. Okay, it's always a red sauce and When they when they add it, okay. Now there is you don't get this red colored chilies in Shezwan, okay. So there is no connection into it. To be very frank, this is what I have learned. This is what I have learned, which I am telling you. So don't feel bad that uh, by the time the actual Chinese has come into India, there is a lot of changes that have taken place, and you new generation are being shown the new picture. What I am showing you is the exact original old picture, okay. Now this is the red red chili paste that we use it, okay. Now the main constitution that goes into a lot of sauces is a combination or single item, but something called as a celery is used a lot of time into a lot of sauces or a lot of other sauces. Okay, then there is this red green chili and fresh green chili and fresh red chili. These these are also used in different forms. Now if you go to see in Chinese, the way they go look into the art, so that is there is a way they do the cutting also. Now, Because we are doing dim sum, there is a thin cutting that is called as a chop. Otherwise, there are shreds, there are long cuts, there are dices, there are diamond cuts. There's a lot of different different cuts which determine a certain name for a certain dish. Okay. Then we have this chopped ginger and the chopped garlic. We'll require pepper powder, a little bit of ajinomoto, and salt. Okay. This is what the basic constitutes are. Now, there's a lot of sesame oil that has been used in Chinese. Okay. To be very frank, this is not used. White vinegar is rarely used. A lot of brown vinegar gets used, and soya sauce. Okay, now original, authentic soya sauce in China. Okay, it is their favorite because soya is a main constitution, main ingredient that is there in China that grows in abundance. So this soya sauce, an authentic original soya sauce. For example, I'll tell you this soya sauce. Uh, Cost eighty-five rupees for seven hundred grams. 
But an original authentic soy sauce will cost at least 10 times of what this cost. Okay, these are all artificial or these are all you know, factory made soy sauce, basically. Okay, authentic soy sauce, the smell is different, the taste is different, they are not as salty as these. Okay, so if you if you see an authentic soy sauce, you will never find something called as water ingredients. Soya sauce is the soya sauce. Okay, it is basically soya, which is crushed, okay, and it is led to ferment for six months to a year. And during the fermentation process, it, it turns black. Okay, it, it, it looks like a sludge. It literally looks like a sludge. There they strain it out, and that is what the basic soya sauce is. So in soya sauce, the ingredient will be water, a little bit of salt, and soya. That's it. But here you'll we'll, we'll find something called as emulsifiers, okay, uh, colors in it, and then uh, preservatives and all this. Thing. Okay. So basically, if you go to see soya sauce abroad, has got a different taste, different pungency. We Indians wouldn't like to eat the authentic soya sauce because it's for a different taste. Okay. Now for today, what we are going to do is we'll be using one meat. There's a lot of different meats that can be used. As I say, dim sum is a small tidbit. Okay, when you eat it, it actually touches your heart. So the authentic meaning of dim sum is to touch one's heart. Okay, so that is where basically uh, you need a lot of uh, art into it because every piece should be of the same size at the same weight. So when they do it. Whatever speed they do it, it has to be on the same size, the same shape, okay, and the same weight, okay. You cannot keep on changing it. Now, what I learned during those days, there was something called as a glutinous uh, flour, which was to be imported from China, which was a little bit difficult point. So there was a substitute that was used, that was high quality wheat flour, or or, or what we call as a tamida. Okay? So the only high quality available during my time, to be very frank. 1993 and 2003 was the flower that was available in Mumbai was the bluebird Maida. So we used to do it at that. But currently, if you see now, some import export has become very easier. So a lot of things have started coming in from China. But the basic is where they use this glutinous flour. Okay. Then they use uh, potato powder is used, rice gluten is used, and there's a lot of other things which constitute. The moment you want to go into something called as crystal dimsum. Now these are called as crystal dimsum wherein you can see the stuffing that is inside. <coughs> okay. Now in crystal dim sum, the, the shell becomes very transparent. So for that to make it transparent, there's a lot of gluten that has been used in it. That is the rice gluten that is used in it. Okay. The, the, the corn flour, the rice gluten. Now these things are really very really expensive, which is the reason uh, you get only this crystal dim sum, only pipes over there. You pay more, you get the best over there. Okay. Now, before I go ahead, I'd like to tell you all, one more thing is now the equipment that is used to make dim sum. Okay, there are two to three basic equipment which is used. And uh, during those days, they used to make the every chef or a dim sum chef makes his own tools. Okay, luckily, I've, I've, I've literally in this gap between uh, after becoming a principal, I've lost some of the tools. My box is not available. Okay, but there are certain tools which are still carried with me. And the tools are made by the chef himself. Okay, it has to put it, it goes as per the hand or the adjustment that I do, I, I have to make my own tools. So we literally make our own tools. So what we require basically is, uh, this is called as a dim sum patti. Okay. It's like a spoon, but it's a flat spoon. This is made out of bamboo. Okay. Now, literally I can show you is, I was in the process of making more. This is the bamboo. We cut it into strips. Okay, and then with a knife, I just mark it and I start carving it. Okay, I start flattening it up the way I want, and this will be the handle part, and this will be the flat part. After doing it, is what I get is this. Okay, now this is the patty that I have. It is flat. Okay, it is a little bit bent over here, and this is thicker than this because it has to come into my hand. When I'm doing even a thousand pieces, I my hands shouldn't get tired. So I make the, the dim sum patti the way I would like to have it. And this is used. This is the way we use it for filling up the dim sums, covering it up. The base part, one part, both the part has to be smoothened up. Once it is smoothened up, okay, next we do is seasoning it. Now this bamboo has to be soaked in water for at least 24 hours. Okay, you start with the hot water and put it into the, into the hot water for 24 hours. After that, it is removed from the water. You can see, okay, you can see the color and after seasoning, how the color changes. Okay. 
Once it is soaked for 24 hours, you remove it and then you sear it in hot oil. So, in our time, a Teflon coating. You say a Teflon coating. This is what a Teflon coating that is used to be done in authentic Chinese. Once you sear it with hot oil, this thing becomes almost non-stick. So, it is a non-stick putty that we have. Then, from a wood, you make a roller. This is a roller, but luckily, nowadays in the market, you these things are available. It's an acrylic roller, but an authentic Chinese chef will always find, they, will, they, they always carry this with them. It is their tool, which is not given to anyone. Okay, This is a roller, but uh, we were able to find a roller. I, because I lost a roller, but we were able to find a roller. But similar thing, we take wood, pure wood, and then pure wood, you just keep on scraping it up and make it into a roller. Okay, This is the size of the roller. This is the thickness. This is the diameter of the roller. If you see, it is hardly the shape of a one rupee coin. Okay. And then max to max, you require is, we don't use knives, Chinese people, they use a chopper for a lot of things. The chopper, you cannot keep it in your pocket. Okay. And then max to max, you require the chopstick. This is a bamboo chopstick, a simple paint chopstick. This is a, these are used for making shapes okay, or making molds into it. So that basically that, that, that is the only thing that we have. Okay. This is for the Chinese to make the themselves. You, you start with a bamboo. I carve out the bamboo. I make it into a a spatula or a spoon for stuffing. This is a chopstick and this is a roller. Okay. Now we will start with the basic thing that is a dough. Okay. okay. As I told you, which is the reason uh, uh, whenever there is a session or whenever we have to make themselves and Anjuman, I insist on getting the same flour because I work with this flour, okay? And I trust this flour. This is from Bluebird. This is an all-purpose maida. Okay. Now, one kg of maida. If you make a dough with one kg of maida, you can make more than 200 to 250 dimensions. Okay, you this half of it. Is it a boiling of water? Why is that a safe? I'll bring a little bit of salt to it so that to give a little bit of taste so that it doesn't become black. It is just a pinch of salt. It's no, no, uh, it has to be really hot. Can it get butter back? This will be a cold. And the round of salt. I'm a bit Okay. You need to maintain something called the high heat because because I am working with hot dough. It doesn't work out with the gloves. Okay, just leave it. Okay. This water which has to be boiling hot. Okay. Okay. I'm using a wooden spatula because we'll be working with boiling hot water and the dough will be really hot. Okay. I've added salt to it, a little bit of salt so that you get a taste. Mix the salt properly. Now, working with this hot water dough is you have to be really a little bit of 
fast and working it before the water starts getting down the temperature has to be boiling hot this is a lot of patience you need a lot of patience but you need a lot of speed also because i have to see to it that the entire flour gets incorporated with the hot water so half the cooking is done by this hot water boiling hot water So as I said, a lot of patience is required to do this job. till the entire dough comes to a granulated form you need to add water too much of water will spoil the dough too less of water will make it too dry but yes once you start working with the dim sums you know how to alterate it whenever the time requires if it becomes too dry what to do and when it becomes too soggy what next to be done okay as and when we go ahead i'll be telling you the moment it gets a little bit of too dry you can add a little bit of more water before making it into a dough and if it becomes too soggy you make the dough which is soggy keep it aside and then when you're kneading it that is the time we add a little bit of more of the maida okay now this is this is too dry okay i'll require a little bit of now due to the water that is boiling hot half of the flour will get cooked with this hot water okay now before this thing was cold you need to be very careful about this because the water was boiling hot and even the dough is very hot you need to work in a speed where you need to make it into a dough the reason is when it is hot when you make it the steam gets trapped inside which will later on make the dough soft if you leave it for cooling down the entire dough will become dry now when i make a dough the hot water which is there the dough is hot Okay, you need to be careful. I'm making a rough dough. I'm incorporating all the granulated maida that is we have done during the mixing. I need a napkin. Gila karke the. I need a, a regular oil and brush, or just the oil and a knife. Okay, now I made into a rough dough. The dough is still hot. Uh, eighty to ninety, eighty degrees centigrade. That might be the temperature because it's still hot. Uh, please don't try this at home without proper guidance because. I'm doing it because I've been doing it since a very long time. So I got used to it because I know when exactly to remove my hand out of it. So once this is done, we let it 
for some time i need a knife or okay. to cool it down i expose the inter inside surface Uh, let me tell you all once again. This is what I've learned from the Chinese chefs, which I'm doing. I'm not, I'm not doing anything that of my own. What I have been learned, what I've been taught. Now these are the the part which has been exposed. Before it gets dried, we apply a little bit of oil to it so that it doesn't become too dry to retain the moisture that is there inside. This is the dough. Take a clean napkin, wash it in water. This is a soap napkin, but it is squeezed properly, squeezed. It's, it's moist or wet, and then we keep it aside for the entire thing to cool down. Okay, this will take around about ten to fifteen minutes for cooling down. Okay. Meanwhile, I will show you how to make the mixture. Okay. Now, by the time the dough is getting cooled down, we'll be making the mixture. Remember, whenever you have to make a meat mince, usually the Chinese people they use this. They make a mince by using a chopper, so it is hand chopped mince. It has to be coarse. It is not a paste one doesn't work out. It has to be a coarse mince. Okay. Now, in terms of whether it be pork, chicken, meat, any kind of other meats, okay, they have, they use a lot of other meats uh, like duck meat. Then they use prawns. Then we use fish. Okay. Now all this is chopped by a chopper. Okay, it's hand chopped, and then you make a mess. We will be today using only one meat. To be very frank, because we will be showing you how to make the dim sum. Anything over and above this, it is basically the game of different kinds of mixture and different kinds of the uh, seasoning that goes into it. Okay. So. uh to be very frank uh, i'm not using a gloves because i need to know the texture it should be very watery okay it should be very stiff okay, for dim sums because if it, if it becomes stiff the dim sum won't cook in that stipulated small time where the dim sum has to get cooked because there is a certain set temperature where the dim sum has to get cooked when it gets overcooked the shell starts getting soggy and the shell 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 the covering will start getting soggy And start getting disintegrated. Okay, it shouldn't lose its shape. Okay, meanwhile, in that small separated time, the meat also has to get cooked. Okay, otherwise the meat will be uncooked. Too soggy, the shape will get spoiled. Okay, so that is the reason I'm not using a glove. To be very frank, that is the only reason. But yes, you have to maintain hygiene. Okay, I have washed my hand. I again washed my hand before I made the dough. Okay, now this is the meat. What I do is a basic. Okay. The salt goes in as per taste. A pinch of ajinomoto. That's it. Now, if you would like to go for spicy, you can go in for pepper powder. 
okay and if you want any other ingredients to be added in so to make it a little bit of uh, to give it a little bit of color i'll be adding a little bit of uh, this is just to give color and not to give a taste no garlic no ginger into it usually garlic and ginger that will go into either i'll put garlic or i'll put ginger so i prefer to put garlic into it i'll put chopped onions to give it a little bit of taste i'll put a mixture of this stem the pulp and the stem and to do a little bit of more color i'll be adding the greens Okay, I'll just make a mix out of it. Mixing it now for one kg of meat, you require one egg. This is just a little bit less than half a egg. This is basically as a binding agent, which will bind the chicken meat because once the chicken meat gets cooked, it will start separating. So this is basically like a binding agent. the reason why I've, i as i told you all i am not using a gloves because see this is everything that is done with the you need to know how the the meat feels you need to know how the mixture is done how the whether the mixture is coarse or smooth or rough okay whether the binding is done properly or not which actually with a gloves it becomes a little bit difficult and the main <clears throat> idea of the entire stuffing becoming nice and fluffy and soft with which goes up now i will be mixing it in a way where i'll be incorporating air into it okay now this is uh what i thought during my times when i was learning maybe this is a kind of a ritual that they do okay then the chef told me that it is to incorporate air inside it now that is one more thing too much of air the moment it gets steamed it will just fluff up and then it will drop down so to remove that too much of air this is a process where they do wherein they remove the excess air by the way of Can I get a little bit of oil? Okay. A little bit of oil to give it a smooth texture. Yes, that's that's the oil. And the mixing again. so that each and every ingredient gets mixed up very properly with the chicken wings ashin sir chapa sir as you know chinese people uh 
it's a very different place with the Chinese people. Okay, so what we used to do once that once the mixture has been done, we used to take a little bit in a plate, and then we used to put it into the oven and check out whether it is cooked or not. But that is not the rule with the Chinese people because you know they eat uh, everything almost. So that is where uh, even I have got this habit of checking the meat. So we basically just pick up the raw meat, check it whether it's salt is proper or not. I feel the salt is a little bit less. One second, I'll tell you, please don't try all this at home. Okay, take the time. You are very much confident what you're eating and how your stomach can take it. Uh, there was this bowl over here. I required that bowl. Can cover it with the. Or can cover it with the. Thing. We'll go back to the door. You know, just wash my hands. So it has cooled down, not totally cooled down, it has become a, it's still a little bit warm, okay? And because uh, the demo, we, are, we, we will not be able to wait for at least half an hour, we have to keep this for at least for half an hour to cool it down, okay? But then as time is a big problem with the, with the with this demo, I've taken the dough. Okay. Now, if you see, because of the oil and because of the wet cloth, there is no skin formation, it is still soft. Okay. If you see this work of the dough, to knead it and to make it properly pliable and elastic, it will take at least half an hour, minimum half an hour of kneading. Okay, we will not do that part. I will definitely knead it, but then it will be in a little bit of speed. Otherwise, if I have to show, it will take the kneading takes half an hour where it is continuously folding. Okay. I'm trying to open up to incorporate air inside it. The moment you open up, air gets incorporated and the dough will become whitish in color. Now, if you see, the dough was a little bit pale white. The moment the kneading happens, the moment air starts getting incorporated, this way of kneading is basically done in your bakery also. 
but there is a little bit twist to the needing that I will be doing. The fold method is a little bit different with the Chinese. I stretch it. Now this is a system where they do it for all the doors. This basically uh, not a showmanship or something like that. Basically, we see whether the door is stretching or not. If you see, it's dry and it's breaking up over here. Okay, this cracks. Once the door is actually done, it will be really very smooth and you can stretch it. Okay, a uh, similar kind of door is made for making handmade noodles also. But in that, there is a, a chemical that has been used so that it becomes very stretchy and that is where a handmade noodle is made. But the making system is safe. Basically, they say the more you need it, the more gluten formation happens so that it becomes as elastic as possible. So what in bakery that you do is cut, fold, cut, fold, cut, fold in bakery. But here, what we do is... This job is usually done with a night top or a marble top table so that the sound doesn't come out. On this process, if you see when I'm putting it apart, I'm incorporating air into it. When I'm banging it onto, onto the table with the stretch, I'm removing out the air out of it. So it shouldn't be fluffy, it has to be a nice smooth dough. Uh, you can use a, a mixer to make this dough, provided you know what to be the consistency and what should be the smoothness. I'll eat one more. Okay, when you stretch the dough, has to be smooth and there shouldn't be any cracks coming out this way. So this dough it will take time to the dough become proper and white. What I am also doing is basically a folding method. So do you need to uh, have the gluten formed in this dough? Or yeah, do yeah, yeah. Avoid? Gluten plays a very, very strong role because that is what helps in stretching. Oh, side. Thank you, sir. The good part about this is you get very satisfied once the gypsum is made. The bad part about this is you get a lot of body ache when you go back home because this needs a lot of stretching. So to give the stretching exercise and putting this to the dough, you need to stretch a lot. So when we are uh, Actually, kneading the dough is basically the pressure comes from here, okay, and then putting the full pressure onto the dough. So, you can understand this becomes quite tiring, also, because still the dough is, doesn't happen. That is the reason when if I'm wearing a blouse, I will not come to know whether the dough is made or not. So, in the moment I'm doing it, Every time it sticks to my hand, that means the dough is not yet made. The point will come where it will not stick to my hand, it will be as smooth. No, it will be very smooth and non stick. Take a packet. Take a 
it is sprinkling a little bit of mica so that the dough takes a little bit less time. As I told you before, apologies for getting this thing done in a little bit more faster way because actual authentic dimsums, the dough will take at least at least half an hour to 45 minutes for the game. Only after that, the dough is you can say it is ready. Now, how do you make sure the dough is ready? Is when the moment you cut the dough, okay, you cut it by hand only, you get that sound of snapping. That is where the foundation is properly done. So if the gluten formation is not done, it will, it will not get that noise of snapping. For the shell, the small balls that you have to make, you can use a knife also, but the traditional way of doing it is they cut it by hand. That is okay. That is okay. That is okay. I'm showing to them. Okay. Now, by the way, this uh, dough that we have made, hardly 10 minutes, I have needed it. This will require at least half an hour more of bleeding. Okay, but not wasting much time. I'll show you. We will go ahead with it. Can we do this in the machine as well in the planetary? Mixer? Yeah, yeah, we can do it in the machine. Provided you should know the consistency and when to stop. Okay, now the point is like the gluten formation, it will break, it will again make, break, make. A point comes after a certain point, the gluten will not get made. So you need to know when to stop. So when you do it by hand, you will know the consistency and the smoothness. Now, if you see still, it is not that smooth. You will still find a little bit of rough yeah, edges. Yes. Okay. It becomes, it has to be really very smooth. So to make it smooth, it will take this. I just try and put in another five minutes of effort. So as I said, banging it on the table is, I thought it was a ritual, but it is not a ritual. It is basically to see whether the dough is stretchy or not. The dough is stretchy. As I, as I showed you before, the first two times when we did it, the dough broke. Okay, the point comes in where if I keep on banging it for at least five times also, the dough will not break. It will be nice and stretchy. That is the point where we start with using the gypsies. Still very soft. Take some time. And I think we'll continue with it. Okay, as I said, uh, one uh, this is a half a kg dough. A uh, one kg dough will uh, can make almost 200 to 220 pieces of pencil. This will make almost 100 pieces because the sizes are really very small that you have to keep. I'll take half of that dough. Okay. 
with this we can uh, keep it in the kitchen in, in the fridge once the dough is made the extra dough can be kept in the fridge after packing it with cling wrap because time is a big problem where the actual thing takes a very long time the preparation takes a very long time and uh, as i said we we need to make a proper length and there is a proper thickness that you have to maintain all over on the way that i am doing it is basically if you see i am taking my hand this way and then pulling it back so in this way i'm just stretching it okay and because i've not worn a gloves i can feel the thickness and the smoothness okay so wherever there is thick i just stretch it and i'm putting bringing my hand back okay to be very frank this is the first time that i am doing it in such slow otherwise it is basically the speed that we have to be in but in, if you see it in slow my hand goes this way so that i pull it this is the way where i am rolling it and i am stretching it okay so with a gloves you don't come to know where it is thick or where it is thin okay the one flat Okay, now till this part we have not added cornflour to it. This is the point where we add cornflour to it so that the rolling part becomes a little bit smoother. Also, the cornflour doesn't allow the dough to get dry very fast. It's like a coating. Oh. Um, This is where we start. To be very frank, let me tell you, the dough has still not ready the way it is supposed to be. But then, as time is a problem, because it will need at least half an hour and forty-five minutes minimum to make the dough ready. Okay. Uh, we didn't want to do that thing of making the dough ready one day before and then showing it to you. This is how the dough looks when it is ready. That's the reason. Like whatever the authentic part is. But to be very frank, to get a proper dough, you need to knead it for at least half an hour to forty-five minutes. Okay, as you see, I've made it into the roll. Whenever I feel it is thicker, it has to be of the same size. Okay, this is one ideal size for making pizzas. Or this is what I've been taught. To be very frank, okay. Okay, now we make it into portions. Okay. You can use this to cut it. You can use a knife to cut it. Frankly, I do it because then I know exactly what is the size. Okay. Now, just see because I can see it from here how much big I want, how much small I want. Okay. I am taking exactly. If you see, this is the size that I am taking of my thumb. Got it? You can, you can. I don't know whether if you can, you are able to hear it. The snap noise is a little bit less because the dough, as I said, it is not ready. Once the dough is fully ready, you will literally hear the snapping noise when I'm breaking it. Can hear the sound. So you are close by and can hear the sound. And so we seen you stretching and pulling and getting tired as well. I can literally sir, see sir sweating and sweat falling down. Because the problem is you cannot put the fan on, or else you will not be able to listen to the. Okay. I can literally see sir sweat falling down and while kneading. So in that you know, 
due to physical things, I was not able to. Nowadays, I use a hair hair band. Okay, now. Has anybody did anybody count how many pieces I made? This is almost two uh, fifty grams to three hundred grams of the flour that I took. Okay, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, thirty, thirty-two, thirty-four, thirty-six, thirty-eight, forty, forty-two, forty-four, forty-six, forty-seven. Okay. Almost we have reached fifty. Two hundred fifty grams, fifty pieces in a kilo. It will be two hundred pieces. This is how the work it works. Okay. I'll add a little bit of corn flour so that it stops doesn't stick to each other. Now the the actual thing comes in is where I have broken it. Okay. When I break it, you know this is a sequence. Okay. I hope you all understand what I'm saying now. If I keep it this way, you will understand now. It will be easier. This is the way I've broken it. So when I'm rolling it, this is the way I'll be keeping it for rolling. Okay. This is just to show you that before breaking, how it looked. Now I've broken it this way. Okay. Now when I've broken it this way, that means it's a tube, and I've broken it over here, and I've broken it over here. This is the tube part which is broken. When I'm rolling it. I have to be very careful if I have to make it round. This has to go this way. This has to go this way. So on the top it will be the broken part, and the bottom will be the broken part. Okay, I'll show you what will happen if you do it this way. The entire dough, when you roll, it will become a a rectangle. If you want to keep the dough round, you need to be very careful. The broken part should be. The up and the bottom should be the broken part. Okay, so this is basically not that difficult to understand because once you learn it, then it becomes very easy. So when you are making the dough, you are breaking the dough, you are kneading the dough, you know which is the up part and which is the down part. Once again, I'll tell you when I, I the, the way I've broken it. Okay, this is the way I've broken it. So this is the broken part. This is the broken part. So one of the broken parts should be bottom and one on the top. After this, when I press it, I'll get a round. Okay, but if I do it in a wrong way, I'll take a smaller one. This is the broken part. This is the broken part. Okay, if I do it broken part, broken part. If I do it this way, when I roll, it will become a. Okay, so that is where the trick lies. Now to rectify it, what I'll do is I'll just pull it behind. I'll pull the broken part on the top, and then this gets rectified. Okay, let's go in a little bit of speed. As I said, I'll I'm not disheartening any one of you all. Uh, it takes a lot of time to learn this technique. And uh, this is one kind of a cuisine which you cannot learn it within, you know, an hour's time or so. It takes a lot of time to understand the concept behind it. It takes a lot of time to understand why certain things have been done. And I will be really happy if you all are taking note of what is happening, and then you just put down your concerns on there are certain things which I have done which I may I may not have explained it to you all. So you can ask me at that time why I have done certain thing. Okay, again I'll tell you the where I've cut the entire roll, the broken part down and the broken part up, and when you press it, it becomes a round. Because once you start rolling it, I'll show you what happens once you start rolling it. Okay, so let us finish with this, and I'll keep one spare to show you all what happens if you don't take the proper. Broken part, and then press it in a proper way. Okay, you need to know where the broken part is. Okay, I've done it because the amount is less. I can still afford to keep it open. Otherwise, okay. 
यू नीड टू कीप इट ऑन उसका ना क्लिंग रैक में डाल देना तो बच्चे ना डोए Because the amount is very small, but then the best is after it is done, you do the damp floor. Okay. Now these are the two which I said. This is the broken part and this is the broken part. Okay. Ideally, this is the way it is done, where the broken part is kept down, and then you press and you get a round. Okay. Now, if you don't do it that way, it will become a, a rectangle. As I said, it will become a rectangle okay now what will happen with the rectangle if i roll now this is where i start the roller not much of a corn flour very little too much of corn flour i will not be able to stick when i make the dough okay please note this is the one which are the faulty ones which are not rolled in a proper way they are not pressed in a proper way now when i start rolling Now there is a technique of rolling where you keep the sides very thin and the center thick. I'll tell you what is the reason. Okay, this is the way you hold it. You don't leave it because you have to stretch it. Now I am just okay. I'm just stretching it and I'm pulling my hand behind along with the dough. I'm not leaving the dough. when i'm rolling i'm pressing the roller down okay round about three to four turns this is the side that is thin. now if you see the sides are thin but the center is thick ah uh, where is the light okay if you see in the light you will come to know the sides are thin and the center is thick you can see it the center is thick and the sides are thin okay okay so all of them they go in this direction okay now this is because we have done it we have folded it in the right way the main cut that comes round when you roll it it becomes it will definitely be round okay now what happens to this one okay the one which has been pressed in a very wrong way see it will not happen how much i will try to make it round it will be always a rectangle so what you need to know is when you are cutting it and after that when you are pressing it down you making it a small bob it has to be cut part on the top cut part on the bottom the moment this thing happens that means you realize that you have not you know made it into a ball in a in a right way otherwise any other if you see all of them i don't have to think twice Ah, uh, please let me know if you would like log like me to go slow. Okay, it is just four or five rows. We made the. Ah, uh, okay. Once the dough is ready in a proper way, that it takes whatever means to do the making the dough, you will not even find this. It will be really very smooth. Okay, that is where you know the dough is made. Here, because we have ended it very fast, because of the time constraint, the smoothness of the dough is lesser than what it's supposed to be. Okay, once again, I'll just show you. Let's go a little bit slow once again. Okay. 
uh, because I'm used to doing it in a speed. Okay, a little bit of concur on the top and the bottom so that it doesn't stick to the table. Okay, once provided your table is nice and clean. Okay, I'm doing it again. I'm just pressing it, not too heavy, not too light, but I'm still pressing it. And I'm moving my finger along with the roller. Okay. Okay. You can come this side. This side you'll be able to see okay, what I'm doing. Okay. Now you will also understand why only this small roller. Because the major part goes under your palm. This is the only part that is required. If the roller is too big, it is very difficult to handle. If the roller is too small, it is very difficult to handle. This is the ideal size. It is made with wood. Okay. Just We'll stop with that. Just a little bit later on. Okay. Once this is ready, the last one this is the first one. When you start breaking the dimsum, you start with the first one. Okay. This plays a major part. And the wet duster is kept on the door so that it keeps moist and soft. Door rolling is done. Okay, we have made the dough, we have cut them into portions. We have rolled them, the portions are been rolled. All is kept under a bit. This thing I've showed you the ingredient that is being used, and we have made the mixture. Where is the mixture? You need to keep the dough aside for when you make it with hot water, you need to keep the dough aside for at least an uh, half an hour. So that it gets come to a normal room temperature and then you knead it. Okay, the kneading takes almost half an hour to 45 minutes. Meanwhile, when the dough is being kept on rest, we made the mixture. Okay, chopped. We have put the chopped ingredients. Too much of an ingredient will spoil the taste of the dimsum because it has to be as light as possible. The mixing part, we have done it with a, a, a brisk mixing. What do you do it with a whisker? Okay, instead of a whisker. I use my fingers as a whisker. We incorporate air into it, and then when that is to make it a little bit light and fluffy. Too much of air will, you know, when it gets steamed, it will start ballooning up, and it, it might break the dips up. Okay, it's much, we don't need too much of a ballooning up. That's the reason. Once I've done the the whisking part over here, I've I've I've, I've used the entire dough to bang it back so that to remove excess air out. Okay, and this we keep we have to keep it aside for at least half an hour so that. The entire mixture gets, you know, uh, the flavors they get mixed up with the meat. Okay. Now, mixture is ready. There can be a variety of mixtures. Okay. It can be veg, it can be non veg, it can be meat. Okay. There's a lot of mixtures that we can be done. There are mixtures, there are different kinds of dimsums that uh, are there. Okay. One with a wet mixture, and then there are something called the pow. Pow is Indian way, just have to go the pow. It's a fermented, fermented dough. For that, here we can at least pull up the time, but for a power mixture, it has to, we have to keep that time for the entire thing to ferment, then you have to knock back it again, and then we start going with the, the power. Okay, now those are fermented, it becomes like a soft, but it is steam. In that, because we would like, we wouldn't like to take, you know, the, 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 the risk with the meat, because the power has a very thick skin, dough has a very thin skin, just the dimsum have a very thick skin in themselves. This these dim sum they have a very thin, thin skin, and the bar has a thick skin. So the time that it takes to cook, it will it uh, the inside part will not get cooked, so it will it, will, it might remain uh, you know uh, raw. That is the reason the cooked meat is used in a bar. So either pork is roasted, okay, in a special marinade, and then they have chopped into small pieces, mixed with the sauce, and then they use it as a filling. Or the chicken, which is cooked and that is put inside, so that we give only that because. If it if we give more time for the dough in during the steaming for the power and allow the meat to cook inside, the entire outside will get flattened up and then it will 
there will be no point in making the sound. So anything that goes in a, a fermented dough, the mixture inside is a cooked mixture. It's already cooked. Okay. So we only allow the, the skin to cook. But in a flat skin, because the skin is very flat, the mixture can get cooked. We have incorporated air. We have incorporated air inside it. There is oil. Okay. There is air inside it and the moisture. All three together they form a steam and then they cook from inside very fast. Okay. Uh, now, once we have done this, we need to make a part of the bar. Okay, this has to be ready. This is a steamer. You can have a regular steamer. What we have done over here is we have done a makeshift steamer, and this is a dimsum basket that is used. Okay. I have kept it covered so that the steam doesn't get wasted. Uh, when you are making dim sums, there is a steamer tray. It is done in bulk whenever it is made in bulk. Or the steamer tray has got a steel plate. Okay, you must you have a steel plate. So the steel plate you use oil. Okay, so I will be you have an oil in brush. So the dim sum doesn't get stuck in that. We oil it. Now, for dim sum baskets, the moment you get a brand new basket, you still need to follow that system where these baskets are soaked in hot water. For at least you make the hot water, you soak it, and you keep it in the water for 24 hours. Any new basket, okay, it has to be soaked in hot water for 24 hours, or after removing from that, after soaking in the water, you put it into a steamer and let it steam. You put oil and then you again let it steam. That is where it becomes a non stick kind of thing. Otherwise, things will get stuck to it, okay. So, to make it non stick, this so what we call it as seasoning of the bamboo. So, the bamboo has been seasoned, this has been used since a very long time, so this is already seasoned. I have made this thing ready. Okay, as I said, we have this. We'll start with it. The thick part is in the center, the thin is in the You know, every time you take, there is a particular how much the size it will hold. Okay, a little bit more than this is what it ideally this can hold. Okay, now the major part is I'm pushing it down and I'm opening my fingers from here so that it becomes a cup. Okay. If you see here, it is flattened, but I pushed it down. Here it is, it is a, it has a bunch. Okay, it is pushed down, and then we start with the designing. Okay, now there's a lot of design that goes in, but an ideal chicken dim sum is this is the chicken dim sum. The triangle is where it depends from restaurant to restaurant in Golden Dragon. If any Tom, Dick, and Harry who comes to the section, the moment he sees this, he'll say it's a chicken dim sum. Okay. Now we do is we can do a lot of things to this. What we can do is we can just highlight it by making it into frills. Okay, I've given it a frill. Machines and 
इसके लिए ऐसा कुछ करते करते हो ओके आई एम पुशिंग इट डाउन पुशिंग इट डाउन द मोमेंट आई एम पुशिंग इट डाउन आई एम ओपनिंग माय फिंगर्स दिस वे सो दैट इट बिकम्स लाइक अ कप as i said this is a regular chicken dim sum you can give it a shape by making thrills on it okay now you can go into variations there's a lot of variations now basically i've shown you all the basics of how to make a mixture it can be any kind of a mixture basics of how to make a dough how the variety is cut after this comes innovations you can use your range to make different different designs provided you have practice with okay now there is something called as i said the shape now this is the shape anybody comes to the dim sum section in golden dragon any industrial training comes in the moment they say the order is for chicken dim sum he knows what to reach so all the triangles are chicken dim sum with a frill or without a frill okay the frilling the frilling part okay now this the frilling part is done for say for example if you have a dim sum uh, festival or a new year festival so to give that a little bit of glamour okay this is just putting a glamour okay otherwise both are same a regular dim sum goes in this way during uh, you know the those special uh, in, uh, events that come in or a festival that comes in that is where you will give it a little bit of glamour okay what more glamour you can give Keep it this way. I can put chopped carrot, or I can put green peas. Okay. I can still make it into a glamour. I can put frills in between. Okay, now this will be chicken. There's a lot of shapes that you can do. I'll keep on showing you to other men come before I forget. Now there is something called as a kote. A kote is a lamb mince dim sum. Okay, the name kote comes for the shape. Now there is a particular shape which is a half crescent with frills on it. Okay, now when it comes to a kote, so this is the way you hold the kote, and I started from here. This is a point. Okay. You have a. Uh, lamp okay uh i'm really very sorry it becomes a little bit difficult for me to handle because i'm not used to going so slow it becomes a little bit difficult okay otherwise this is the kote okay, this is how the thing goes in the thumb is the my thumb is the guide that will give me the shape and what the size is okay this is the guide okay and i do it slowly 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 i'm really very sorry this is the first time i'm doing a demo so going slow doesn't it takes a little bit of time for me and the shape also gets a little bit spoiled otherwise what we used to do The hotels. That is how my chef used to show. See, I take it like that. I hold it, and then da 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 da. This is how it happens. It's done. Okay, now this is the kote. This shape is the kote. Now there is a, a lot of other shapes that you can do. Okay. 
Now, if I hold it this way, this is a sumite. Now, on top, for example, if I take carrot or any other thing, this I am just, just for representational purpose, chop carrot or you can put something like that where you can give it a color to it. Okay. This is how the sumai. Now, usually a sumai is made with seafood. Okay, prawn is the ingredient that is used for sumai because prawn wins, becomes a little bit sticky when you can hold. Fish wins will not hold because it will start getting flaky. Okay? So, when you use it for prawns, you can either make it with this dough or you can make it with a wonton skin. Now, wonton skin is something like a pasta sheet. It's a very dry kind of a dough. It's very difficult to make. You need a machine to make it. And it is egg, very little water, egg and maida in it, a little bit of salt. And made the same way as a pasta it is made, but it is much more harder and much more stiffer than a pasta dough. Okay. So similar way, and then they make it into sheets. They roll it into sheets. The sheets are cut into squares. And then that is where we use it for making suma. Now I can show you is basically we have covered the entire part. The main thing that I can show you now is basically shapes. Okay. Now shapes are used for various occasions, Chinese New Year or something like that. Okay. Shapes are basically used for occasions. You can make a lot of shapes. This is how we make shapes. Now, this is where the chopstick comes handy. Okay, I just open it up. I will put a P, green P. I can put anything that I want. Okay, this is chopstick is used for opening it up. Okay, you can put green peas. You put green peas or you put any any colored. Okay, any colored wedge. Now, when you go for complex things, as uh, Edix has said, I had been to the competition, okay, where I had used duck meat and quail meat to make one dim sum. Okay. Now, there are, these are these various shapes that you can make. It is basically now everything that you do is your imaginations. You can use it to make various different shapes. This is the shape that is given to the bow. Then in Chinese, there is something called as the yin and the yang, that is the good and the bad. So what we do is we take a plan and we take a spicy mixture or we take a, a two different meats. Okay. Or we take a, make a combination of a meat and a wedge. Okay. Before I make the yin and the yang, that are two dim sums together, the shape that is used for it is we start with a tucking in. Then we give a phone from both the sides. Okay. This shape is also used for a prawn dim sum. 
where the prawn bends and a whole prawn is used and the tail of the prawn is kept outside. So the tail will come over here outside. Okay. I have a full form. Inside, in this side, this alternate filling that I do. Okay, now what I did was this one, but now I'm going in a reverse. Okay. The tail, the tail, now this is in a reverse, the tail. Now in an yin and yang, what we do is, suppose this is fish and this is chicken, or this is chicken and this is lamb, or this is any kind of a meat and veg. Okay, in yin and yang, we just get this thing together and we press it together and then this is steamed together. So this is a yin and a yang. That means there are two different meats which are put into one. You just press it together. So when this when this thing gets steamed, it's it gets steamed as one. So when you're eating, it gets you can separate it out or you can eat it together. Okay. And then there are empty number of shapes, more shapes. Just recollect all the shapes and spin. Yes. Sir, so, let's put a tester and try it. Elixir has been kind enough to get me a prawn. Thank you, sir. Now, in the prawn, it is basically a prawn mince that will go inside. I'm just stuffing it with half a prawn mince. Imagine this is a prawn mince. Sir, I'll need a knife. I need a knife. No, no. This is a yin and a yang. No, no. You're making prawn and chicken. This is a prawn. This is a prawn, basically. Now, as you all may be knowing, whenever you cook uh, prawns, it curls. Okay, to avoid it from getting curled, we we break the muscles of this. So these are made ready beforehand. Okay, these are made ready beforehand and kept ready. Now, when I'm making this, this is a, imagine this is a prawn mixture. This prawn is just marinated with salt and pepper powder, or you can keep it plain. Okay. I can keep this as an eye and then. Okay, this is a prawn dimsum. After that, you can go on making a lot of dimsums where shape and size. I can share the video with you all. Okay. And uh, it will take some time for me to recollect what exactly because it has been. I joined Taj in 1993. In 1996, I represented Taj for the All India Taj Ship Olympiad, where I got a silver medal for Chinese. 
my main duty was the divisions and the desert. I should take care of Benson and the deserts. Okay. Uh, my, if you Google out, you'll come to know the main desert for the Chinese people during their uh, Chinese fever is the moon cake. Okay. Now, it is a very difficult kind of a thing to make. It took me at least three years to perfect it because the dough of the moon cake doesn't have any liquid. Okay. The only liquid that is there is that is oil. So you can imagine how when you make a dough with just an oil and it has to stand. I don't know, you'll just Google out what a moon cake is, how does it look like? Okay, you'll come to know what it is. Exactly, it is a cake, okay, which is made with flour and oil and milk powder. Okay, and there is a stuffing of red bean and uh, or dates. Okay, so that is a speciality which is not steamed, but it is in the oven, it is it is baked in the oven. Okay, it has to be perfect. More temperature will make it black and more from inside, less temperature, the entire thing will sit down like the way uh, I can compare it with an uncut. I can make a call. By the time it is cooked, it is on flat. Okay. So that was one thing that I'm really happy that I learned it, but then I couldn't pursue it further because that needs all these things, you know, you just cannot learn and leave it. Okay. You need to continuously pursue with it. You can make more shapes, okay, more designs. These are just dim sums which are steam. There are dim sums also which are or stack items which is going to the fried part also. Okay, then there are pan fried also. Well, these things are steamed and then they are cooked in the pan. There are ones which can be go which will, will go directly into the pan and pan fried. There are ones which get steamed and then it gets pan fried. There are ones which gets fried. Now for fried, this is not the dough for the fried. For the frying, the dough is a different dough which is made with cold water and oil. Okay. So and, and, and so, so if you see, there is one dough which is made with hot water for steam items. There is one dough which is made with uh, yeast. That is a fermented dough which goes into what we call as a bar. Okay, there is one dough which is made like a pasta which goes into those sheets. Okay, they are called as uh, wonton sheets. You make wontons out of it. You make spring rolls out of it, and you make a certain dimsum which is called as sea wine. Okay, and then there is one dough which is just Water, very little water, more of oil, which comes into layers, okay, which is a good deep fry. Now, in this fry, if you are able to get it, if I am able to get those videos, I'll try and get those videos. There are so many beautiful things that they make it. There is one uh, fried dessert, which is called as a lotus flower, okay. Till the time it starts getting fried, it will not, the moment it is made in a proper way, the moment you fry it and it is very slow fried, okay, it is made with two different colored doughs. And the moment of frying happens, the leaf will start opening up. And the final product is like a lotus flower. Okay. So there's a lot of work that goes into all this thing because it's really basically into the hard part. Steaming takes five to seven minutes. Eating takes hardly a second. Okay. So there's a lot of work that goes into it. Four in a portion, six in a portion, eight in a portion. But the moment it goes to the table within, within, within seconds, it just goes up. Okay. Now, Basically, this is what I would like to I, I show you all. There are various different shapes that you can see. But to get to that shape, you need to know the basics of how the dough should be and how the mixture should be. After that, it is just making. There's a lot more shapes. Okay, I would have loved to show you. But then I would have to re definitely recollect it. I would have to look at the photograph of the shape and then I will recollect back how it is. Made, okay. So there are different, different kinds and different ways that you make it. These are some of the basic shapes. Are some of the basic, basic shapes. The special shapes are made only during festivals because the special shapes take a long, a, a longer time, a longer duration. Okay. Uh, I think I've shared a photograph of you with that plated part. Yes, yes. The dim sum which looks like a bird is one which has got a quail and uh, duck meat in it. So I've given it a shape of this thing. Okay. Uh, the, the one that bow which has got rabbit meat in it, I've made it into a rabbit. So the shape will show what is the stuffing inside. Okay. So if you see, I think there is a bird shape, there is a rabbit shape, and there is, I, I don't recollect what it was, because it's, it's been year 1996. So if I recollect, I recollect it. So I've given a rabbit shape, a perfect rabbit shape for one stuffing, which has got a rabbit meat stuffing inside. Okay. And it is made out of a fermented dough. So it, when, 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 it, when it cooks, it becomes like nice and fluffy. It looks like a rabbit, a small rabbit. You can check with the 
sir, he can share me the photographs of the competition where I won. Pardon? Uh, more than this, if you would like to know anything more than this, uh, sir, we'll be putting it for steaming. Now, as I said, we have, you need to give space in between each so that they don't stick to each other once they start getting cooked. Okay, you just can't stick to each other. So after it gets cooked, it will start breaking up. Okay. Give space. So, late seven to eight minutes for the thing to get speed. Okay, it's mainly that we're going to decor and shape. There is a lot of uh, colorful ingredients. Yellow capsicum, then squash, then yellow squash, carrots. Okay, these are the things that we use finely, chop it very finely. But chopping it finely is another different big problem where basically in Chinese, you first cut into thin shreds and then you cut it back into small chops. You don't just literally chop it. Okay. Now these things are then blanched with a little salt so we have to retain the color and they are used. Okay. Then we use egg yolk. We take egg yolk, we, we add a little bit of uh, food color into it. Okay. We can make different colors. We beat it, then we put it onto a flat plate, and in the flat plate, we let it steam. Okay, once the egg yolk gets steamed with different color, we take remove it out and then we again begin with chops. That can be used as a spoon. That can be used for decor to give a decoration to the. I can put it over here in these, okay? That can be used for decor, okay? Okay, now quickly I'll show you all red chili paste. Okay, you take red chili paste, okay? You add a little bit of ginger to it, you add a little bit of garlic to it, okay? And a little bit of celery to it. Then you put a little bit of vinegar, red tomato ketchup, and then you sear it with hot oil. You get a red, thick, spicy, or a hot garlic sauce with it, okay? Then there are other sauces like a, a, a chili, and, a chili honey dip. You take sugar, melt the sugar on a, in a pan, add a little bit of butter to it, Add a little bit of water, a little bit of vinegar, and let it cook. Okay, in the process of cooking, you add red chili. Remove it, let it get cooled down, you get a honey chili dip. Okay, the same honey chili dip is also available in Thailand, where they add lemongrass to it and ginger. Same thing. Okay, then there is a coriander sauce, onion coriander sauce, where a lot of greens is used. Both the the entire spring onion is used in this chopped form. A little bit of celery, a little bit of regular onion, ginger and garlic, and lots of coriander. The entire thing is mixed, and a little bit of hot garlic is put into it. Okay, the red chili bit. You mix it in a proper way, you add salt. Okay, and then you take chicken stock. If you're a non vegetarian, or if you're a vegetarian, you take vegetable stock. Okay, a little bit of chicken, broth kind of a stock. Boil it and the boiling hot stock is put into this mixture and mixed and kept aside to cool. That becomes a, 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 a onion coriander dip. So there are various dips that you make. You nowadays you get a lot of uh, ready-made dips. So this is how the basic dip goes in. There will be chili vinegar, there will be honey vinegar, uh, honey chili dip, 
chili vinegar. Chili vinegar, you see it every time when you go to the restaurant. Hot garlic, you see it. This is what is the first one, says one. Okay. The coriander dip and the honey dip, it's, these are the two different dips. Okay. Total, you may bring in four, five, six dips together. This coriander dip, during uh, you know festivals, we give it a different look where once the, the coriander and the onion sauce is made, we put it into a mixy and like a pesto. Make it like a pesto and then it is given as a cake. So it is basically varied. There are a lot of variations, but you need to just one piece of get here with the basics. You need to know the basics, what is the time it takes, okay, how to use the ingredients, what temperature to make the ingredients, okay, how much to need it, okay, how to keep it on a rest. So these are basic. Once you come to the basics, then everything else becomes very simple, okay, it will become very easy. After that, it is it is basic. You have to use your brains to make you know, new things. Okay. I hope uh, I was able to give you all in a short time. I'm really, really sorry it was a very short time. But we'll definitely, I promise you all, if we get a chance again, we'll have a live session so that you can you know you can see exactly what is happening in this online and there might be chances that you might miss. But I hope you all have any questions to put across. I'll I'll, I'll definitely answer. Well that, well, that was an interactive session, though, sir, with you. And uh, I myself have uh, learned some new uh, ways of making the, uh, the dim sims. I knew only two or three folds, but I have learned quite a few, though they are a little tricky and difficult. But I'm sure that the students have grasped basic knowledge with art of dim sim. And the rest is up to you kids, to you students, that how you master this art and carry forward in your future. Like I mentioned, that the sea, uh, that as you dive down deep in the sea, you learn more and more and more and more. And that's exactly what we need to do. If you have any questions, you can put that in the chat box, or you unmute yourself one by one, or raise your hand. You better raise, uh, you raise your hand, and uh, uh, you'll be unmuted, and uh, you can unmute and talk. So I'll take your name. Is there any questions? Please raise your hand. No questions. Another two minutes is what you're going to see that the dimsons are getting done. And you see that both the sides these dimsons are being placed. Any questions? So you have a question here, which door is used for clear dim sims? Which door is used for clear dim sims? Yeah, it is basically, it is Use uh, powder chemicals along with uh, rice glutinous glutinous rice flour. Okay, they have to mix it up and then leave it for some time. Uh, what you said is, uh, what was the dough he asked? Which dough is used for a clear dim sum? Yeah, it is it is based. Those dim sums are called as crystal dim sums. What you said as clear dim sum, these are those are, those are the same ones which I said. They are called as crystal dim sum, wherein the dough becomes totally transparent and you can see what is there inside the stuff. So there is a combination. Uh, it is very. It, it 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 is basically you need to. There are certain ingredients which has to be imported from China itself because those are not available over here. Okay. Anyone else? One second. Okay. So there are no questions. So with that, I would end up with this session. But before that, I would like to show. The dim sims over here that are getting steamed, like you can see here, that they are getting steamed.
So just wait your wait for a minute. Hold your horses. Thank you for those beautiful hearts. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for those appreciations, dear students. And I'm sure that you would try these out and, and we would also do with you a simple practical like this. And I don't know what when I will finish the practical with you all. Just wait for another five minutes and so I will show you the presentation. And so is all geared up. So like I mentioned to you that this is an art which you need to practice and it does not come once when you learn and out you go. No, you need to keep on practicing and practicing like the art of making flowers. You can't master the art in one day, but you need to continually keep on practicing and working out so that you get the finesse product at the end. So I'll share the pics with you all in the group or in the in our uh, food production and bakery group. And there you see those beautiful little dim sims. Wow. Wow, they are done. Thank you for those thumbs up and those hearts. So you present different shapes on a plate. Wow, the prawn dim sum looks amazing. There you go. There you go. Seven to ten minutes for steaming. That's the prone, the tail which has curled up. And this is the open one. Steaming. Thank you, Sahil. Thank you, Aboli, for the heart. And thank you, everyone. Okay, with this, I sign out for today. God bless you and see you soon in practicals. All the best for your class test. And this is Chef Farid, so I would like to say the last thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll be, I'll be giving the notes, the note part to Edric, sir, in soft copy and in hard copy, if you all want. He'll share it with you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. This is Teams uh, uh, Microsoft signing out. God bless you.